Uh, I'm Jesse Latour from the Fullerton Observer and today we are visiting Model Mania Hobby Shop. So we're going to go in and look at some models and talk to the owners. So come on in. Hello, how are you today? Are you a builder or are you a collector? We're uh, podcasters. So podcasters. <laughs> podcasters, I see. Can you introduce yourself and tell us about uh, the store? Hi, yes. Uh, I'm Emily. Mm -hmm. I'm Mike. This is Mike. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is Model, Model Mania. Mania. Mm -hmm. And what do you, I mean, obviously there's models here. I mean, what, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the store? What do you, what do you have on on display and what do you do? Oh, well, this may look like a model store. Mm -hmm, but, but it's re it's really a portal. It's a portal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a portal into another dimension. Actually, actually, we're really trying to find a place that's just going to bring community back together and uh, really re-inspire some more tactile uh, engagement, yeah, uh -huh. engagement mm -hmm. rather than always being on our telephones mm -hmm. and always being so stuck in our virtual world, you know, I think it's important to reach out to the public and say, hey, you know what, come in, build, mm -hmm. you know, spend some time with your community. And so, so all of you, all of you are pretty young. So have you, do you actually know what models are? Have you, uh, you, so you do know what models are. We're getting like shaking yeah, heads. Getting, getting so shaking that's heads good. There, but are, are you aware that the, that the subjects of models are vast and varied? You know, like it's like we have a model of an amoeba. Well, Mike, why don't you give us a little tour and show us some of the models, uh, or Emily, or both? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Sure. So. So you lead the way. So okay. You want yes. So we kind of have it somewhat subdivided over here. So when I was like a youngster many years ago, my mother had this thrift shop in La Habra called Bargains Galore. And my dad would take my brother and I uh, to this, these things called uh, International Plastic Modeler Society. And we would go to this and it was all about building plastic models. And then I guess he decided that he wanted to teach us about business. So we would go to the swap meet, buy models that people were selling and then take them to these meetings and resell them. And somehow, that morphed into my mom's thrift shop becoming a hobby shop, mm -hmm. which was bad. That was not good because my mom just, instead of like, you know, standing up and saying, you know, I want my thrift shop, she just let us take it over. So well, what, what is the brief, what is the story of this store? Like when did this open? So that's the whole thing. So we had this, so I started this hobby shop in 1982 and, uh, and, uh, by 1989, I was kind of over it because there's really no money in this kind of a thing. And, uh, you know, I had to have a life, so I left it, but my mom and dad refused to leave it. And so the city of La Habra, it was at Euclid and La Habra Boulevard and the city of La Habra wanted the space where it was at for or like their senior center or whatever's over there right now. And so somehow we ended up with this building in Fullerton in a trade or something. And yeah. so and so uh, and so my dad kept the hobby shop going. Um, he had an engineering firm in here. So to segue to what Jesse was saying, you know, my dad has this very illustrious uh, career. He um, he comes from Canada. Um, he the Canadian Air Force sent him to the United States when he was only 19 years old to get a degree in engineering in, in the brand new field of aeronautical engineering. And so he came to Northrop and got a degree. And he went back to Canada and worked on all kinds of crazy programs, including a flying saucer. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, ended, up the, uh, ended up working on a project uh, that if people are in the aviation world are familiar with, which Adam will be, right? The CF-105 Aero. Correct. Yes. So, so Canada had a plane called the CF-105, which was called the Arrow. It was probably the most advanced aircraft in the entire world at this time. And this is in the late 50s. But the Canadian government came to like a decision that they did not want to engage in building these type of machines anymore. So they scrapped the whole thing and all the engineers that were working on it had nowhere to go. So they got gobbled up by all the American aerospace companies. So my dad came to Convair 
and was working on all kinds of projects in Convair in San Diego. And then when the American Space Program started, he ends up becoming an engineer on Apollo. And he ends up becoming like the main uh, project engineer for Apollo 10, the one that didn't land on the moon. And then after that, he continued on with Apollo Soyuz, uh, space shuttle. You know, he had a very illustrious career. And uh, for example, didn't he work on this one? Yes, in fact, oh, in, so in fact, yeah. in fact, I worked on this one. Oh, so, so there was <laughs> there was a brief moment in my own life when I when I walked the corporate route. For, you worked on Endeavor Station. I did for a year and a half. I worked. I worked in the. I actually worked for a corporation. Oh, that's and crazy. Yes. Was that after the first run of your store in Mahabra? Yes, <laughs> because because obviously I was not going to make it in life. So <laughs> so my dad got me a he got me a job he got me a job at he got me a job at North American. Flashing forward now, like like so, this hobby shop just never died. Right. And it was just filled with models and my dad just kept buying inventory and he would be open one or two days or whatever you know and oh, my brother worked at it or, yeah, and all of this maybe. yeah right. and uh and and uh yeah. by the time <laughs> co by the last 10 years it was probably like the clock shop uh, the antique store across georgia's mm -hmm. like you know it's a miracle when it's open and everyone drives by and goes oh they're open you know we got to <laughs> go see what's in there and uh so uh, during covid when i wasn't working i started cleaning everything up and uh, figured, you know, this would be a good time, you know, to open it up and give my dad a place to come and enjoy talking to people, telling his stories, surrounded by all his models and his books and, and all of this. And uh, we just kept coming closer and closer, but, but there was just a missing piece. And who's the missing piece? Emily. Aww. Emily is the missing piece. I don't know about that, but <laughs> Emily is the missing piece. So, so me, yes. tell, tell us about your role in this in the hobby shop. What do you do here? Uh, my official title, Convergence Control, is probably mainly keeping a nice balance between our professional dreamer uh -huh. here mm -hmm. and reality father, right? And kind of converging the two ideas into something that's really going to blossom mm -hmm. and work for everyone yeah so well and that's when we decided that the real mission of this place isn't necessarily to just sell the old inventory and be done with it but the real mission of the place is to re-engage the community in in something that is more than virtual you know because we we've lost don't you think that 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 as a species, we're losing the concept of what reality actually is. We are. Yeah. You know, we're lost into like a virtual we, world. there's so many different realities. And the reality that even even like this, because you're filming with a camera, which is an alternate reality right there. So the experience of all of the people that will be potentially watching this is different than the experience that we're specifically having right here. Yeah, we're that's true. Because we're actually here. And when you're actually here, you can actually sit down at a table and you can listen to music. And Emily and I will be talking on the microphone about complete nonsense. Yes. And there'll be books in the bookshelf Great that have, no, that have nothing books. to do with military stuff because no. there's too much military and there's too much war and no, there's too much right. of all of that going on right. but at the same right. time we can't deny it right no, and just, yeah, and yeah. so but we can balance it out yeah so you know so if we find a model of a praying mantis it's, that's just as beautiful as a model of a tank right not, adam might not think so better. Better. <laughs> i say it's better i say it's better you know, i appreciate both of them even if you know it's not um my forte necessarily um i appreciate the diversity in the scales, uh, because there needs to be that thing. No one's going to be, um, <laughs> not everyone's going to be interested in military stuff. And, and sometimes you need to take a break from planes or ships or tanks and make some other things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so why don't we go ahead and do a little walkthrough tour and you can talk mm -hmm. about some of the areas that you have. Okay. Uh, maybe, Emily, why don't you, you yeah, take you, over? Uh, yeah, you take over, Emily. I'm going to put these pencils down because right. I, I don't know why I'm carrying them. Right. This section right here, this is kind of the tribute to Pete, really. Not a full tribute to Pete, but it's, a it's good. like it's a good tribute to, you know, a lot of the things that he's worked on and you know, right when you come into the store, it's like boom. It's like yeah. Thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much. Didn't you say he so which of these did he work on? He did worked he on everything that you view? everything that you see here he's everything worked on. Here, Pete, mm -hmm. uh, worked on. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. And this one particularly looks um, older. Do you know what uh, year is this from? Uh, I don't. It, it's Sam. it's probably it's probably about fifteen, at least twenty years old. So I know you um, said it's not about the money, but for people who are looking to say go into collecting or get oh, on this but stuff, you see, collecting we don't like oh, right, you don't because like, there's only say there's all, all, that's the only model in here. That's you want to know something not. really crazy? <laughs> like I shouldn't be telling people this, but if you come in here and somehow Emily gets the idea that you're a collector and not a builder. Somehow that model's just gonna disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I do because hide. because we would rather if you're just gonna put it in a closet. What no, what's the good of that? We no. want we, we, we might as well leave it out it. here for people to look at and talk about, right? Yeah. You know, I know it's uh, that's the whole thing. I mean, what we're really doing is really about the conversation. Yeah. You know, creating a conversation well, and it's amazing this, like, when you... people come in just to sit around and talk yeah. and have coffee. <laughs> the thesis mm -hmm. raise questions and tell stories, right? Like, so this makes me want to learn about, like, what was the Apollo Soyuz? Like, what was the purpose of that mission? Mm -hmm. And there's what really, and you know what? You want to know a little interesting fact that he could tell you. Yeah. Um, he, you'd have to ask him. I don't know where he went. Dad, this one. This yeah, sure. Tell them so, what. This tell them. Soyuz. Tell tell them something about the Apollo Soyuz. Apollo Soyuz. Yeah, because you remember you went there. Well, I was in it. I know. <laughs> Well, well, I know. Flex right you now. went to Russia, right? Like, wasn't it a partnership with Russia? No, the, the partnership with Russia was the, the uh, um, um, mating with our airplane and their airplane. Yeah. So I went there for that job. So, so we had both halves. We had the American half and we had the Russian half. And the Russian half, we had to give them a couple of secrets, like there's a special kind of oil for, for operations in space. And we had, to, we had to give it to him. You didn't want to give him that, did you? I didn't want to give it to him, but who was I? <laughs> well, in a way, it's, it's kind of uh, a peaceful coming together. Oh, well, a, it was very peaceful. In yeah. fact, uh, later on, we had a meeting of, uh, in, in San Diego where the crew of the Russian space park came, came to us and spoke uh, to the audience. And, and one of the most significant things that they said, that I heard them say, is that we learned a lot. And they said they lied to us because America is not like what they say it is. Oh, so Pete, you basically worked on all of these things. This is kind of a tribute to you. So this is the man, uh -huh. Pete Magoski, aerospace engineer, uh, American hero. No, no, American <laughs> citizen. Or citizen, okay, that's fair enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is no room for heroes, right? yeah. we were just engineers. Yes. Interestingly enough, so this is kind of the non-military side, I guess, if you will, in a way. And uh, and you, uh, what we have found, ironically, is that... Way, um, thank you for listening to me. I'm just a good... Well, come over here real quick. Yes. Dad, come over here real quick. You got to you gotta see this. Because because this is like this is like the real altar to him right over here. So, yeah. So so this is like this is like my little all this is like my little altar to him. So so this plane here is a B twenty nine, and this is the plane. This is this is what just made him decide to go into aviation. So he was a paper boy uh, in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada in the early 40s during World War II. And uh, lo and behold, he was delivering a paper to, uh, to the airport and he was up in the control tower handing the paper over. And it so happened that an American B-29s were coming over, I guess, to Alaska or something, and they were landing at Edmonton Airport, which happened quite a bit. And uh, he watched this plane land and actually back up, right? Yeah, she backed up. And I'm he going, could oh not God. believe that a plane... What the hell am I doing in the Army? <laughs> and so he quit right then and there. I went to see the colonel and I said, Sir, uh, I'd like to change uniforms. And he goes, what the hell are you talking about? And I said, well, I'm in the Army, but I want to be in the Air Force. And he said, well, what makes you think you should work in the Air Force? I said, look, that airplane can back up. I can do this. I saw that happen, so... 
that's enough for me. <laughs> yes, yeah, so as you can, so that's what all, every single one of these things here has a story. Yeah. And and even mm -hmm. like so that yellow plane up there is a Piper Cub, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's the first plane that he learned how to fly in. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the whole that, place started here yeah. kind of as a as a special gift for your dad. Yeah. It really did to kind of that's the help whole, with the whole memories purpose of it was and, never to make uh, money, but was no. to really uh, was really you know an for, homage for to Pete. for Pete for and Pete. for my dad right. to give him a place that you know he would love and feel comfortable with and be with and all of his friends. And keep building and yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and his friends are his you, he, he's amazing. His friends are equally amazing. They all have amazing yeah. stories. Yeah. So. It's quite fun when they're all here telling their old stories. But it was great seeing the community respond so well to the store yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. So then that just kind of opened up our whole, like, oh, you know what? Let's have classes. Let's really bring in, mm -hmm. you know, yes. well, the You should the continue showing the them around. Engineering. Yeah, let's continue the right? We'll make, we yeah. need to make more engineers, right? So like okay, we've got the cars. We have kind of our tribute to, to Pete with the space program. We have some kind of sci-fi, Star Trek, Star Wars stuff. Uh, this is all of our new stuff that's going to be kind of for our classes, right? Uh, yeah, we're still kind of picking out which models, but each model will have a whole story behind it. For sure, we're doing the Winnie Mae because Adam just gave me a wonderful story on that. So it'll be a nice little history lesson during that class. Um, yeah, so we're going to probably do a plane, a car, a boat, hopefully a bug. Right? And kind of teach. What's the story of the Winnie Mae? Oh, well, Adam, here we um, go. Here, short, how, how short, long? condense, yeah. condense, summary, brief, summary. Brief. All right. <laughs> so uh, the Winnie Mae was a uh, Lockheed Vega. So this is the same type of plane that. Amelia Earhart was um, the first woman to fly nonstop across the Atlantic in. But um, the Winnie Mae was famous because of an Oklahoman pilot named Wiley Post. He actually, before he became a pilot, lost an eye in the oil fields of Oklahoma. But the insurance payout helped him buy his first airplane. And um, so he was hired as his um, pilot for an oil man who bought this airplane, and the guy named it after his daughter, Winnie Mae. And um, so then Post um, decides he wants to fly around the world with this airplane, and he hires an Australian navigator named Harold Gady, and they managed to fly around the world in eight days. A year later, he decides to do it by himself gets it done in seven days. Um, what year was that? So the first one, the first flight was about 1932. And um, so the other flight was about a year later, 1933. Afterwards, he decides to take this up on some uh, high altitude uh, flights um, because he figures the thinner the air is, um, the um, you're able to go um, a bit faster and the higher up you are, you're able to get out of the way of storms. The problem was the aircraft had a wooden fuselage. It was layers of wood like that. So it couldn't be pressurized, which it needed to be at those altitudes um, in order for him to survive. So he built a pressure suit so he could fly up there. And um, later uh, Post was flying with um, a famous humorist, uh, Will Rogers, on a tour of Alaska, and they were killed in an airplane crash in 1935. So his widow donated the Winnie Mae to the Smithsonian, and it's there in the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. to this day. Very nice. Okay, this is my favorite section with the ships. I love all the old sailboats and stuff. And then this is our cool balsa wood which is my favorite medium. All right, so these are the ships. We have everything from destroyers to submarines to the Cuddy Sark to whatever. <laughs> we have many, many boats. All right, so those are boats. This is the like new coming section, the stuff that just came in. I don't know if you arranged this, but it's not making me happy. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right, here we have our 
Oh, right, these are our figures. We have lots of figures. Uh -huh. And if you are making any kind of the California mission, please know that this is where you may make your stop to get your people for your lovely mission project. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, just want to put that on in there. Only because we ordered these for the California mission kids, right? Because everybody builds a mission. I have, we've Build gotten it domestic animals too. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we did, right? We did. Because yeah. everyone should build. So, so this back area here is actually like, say, like the meat and potatoes of an old school hobby shop. Yes. So, th and it's all organized actually by scale not necessarily by anything else. So we're moving in scale and, be, and, and in a sense, uh, because a lot of model builders actually build within a certain scale rather than a certain genre. And so these are all in one 144 scale, and then it's all 170 second scale, 148 scale, 130 second scale. And it's like, and we've kind of like mixed it all to like together. Makes it, I think, easier that way. Mm -hmm. The one seventy second will be that's the same basic scale as um, HO model railroads, pretty close. Do you have model trains here? We don't, and and there's a great store called Arnold's. If you're into model trains, go to Arnold's. So it seems like this is mm -hmm. more aviation focused, probably because of Pete's interest in aerospace. Mm -hmm. Well. It gets into tanks. It gets into tanks and, and uh, armored vehicles and things and like that. That's usually one thirty seconds. Military figures. In that scale. Um, yeah. cars helicopters. Are, yeah, helicopters. Yeah. Um, the ships, you went through the ships, right? I love the ships. I know, the ships is kind of Emily's thing. I love the And ships. so we've been like, we, we've had to was like make the ships important. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here we got like tanks. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, tanks and helicopters and that there's a that's a whole thing. Yeah. And the big the big stuff, like big Yes. Yeah, I like that. Well, well for people for people that don't know, so here's another like little interesting tidbit too. So quality of models was always kind of up and down and questionable, you know, just because the technology for mold making and such. In today's world, the people who are making new models the the quality is exquisite yeah. like literally you could make smithsonian grade it's, it's models it's absolutely incredible models that would have never existed 30 years ago are now <laughs> existing that's why like some of these here it's you know like like they're crazy like this is this is a 132nd scale model of a b17 which is you know you've seen the movie memphis bell or yep, yep. you know like those that's the plane and this model is probably you know like this big i don't it's even know huge. where somebody would put it but it has the complete interior every detail that you could possibly yeah. imagine in it but i like the timber trailer more i know well you probably like this one too don't you yes of course you do and yeah. then yeah uh-huh yeah those are the ones it's always fascinating Classic. to just look yeah well and the i mean the art the yeah. artwork on these this things is what is we're amazing. having a hard time finding models of dirigibles and balloons because yes. that's really what we want to get is totally. dirigibles and balloons but yeah. Uh, they did. Well, where the aeronauts were supposed to be on the yeah. hot air balloon. We should have a hot air balloon. We need to have a model of a hot air balloon, but happening. it's really hard to find one. Do we um, look at the Star Wars stuff? Because yeah. people are like probably interested in that. You think? Yeah. Oh, do we, there. There's a gentleman here looking. He doesn't want to be filmed. I don't think. But that's <laughs> wow. okay. But but there is like. Um, I so ask so him. well. So essentially, there's two. In, in our in what we carry, there's essentially a couple of basic different kinds of models. There's plastic models, um, which includes resin, vacuform, that kind of a thing. But there's also balsa models, which is like like this one up here is a giant balsa model, and. Balsa models are really old school because, of course, before there was plastic, it was just wood models. And we actually uh, carry old balsa models, and uh, we'll be doing a class on building balsa models. Uh, yes, yeah, so the, so so part of the science fiction is, of course, Star Wars. We have we have a lot of old Star Wars and Star Trek, and and in fact, uh, there is all sorts of different science fiction shows too. There's Battlestar Galactica, there is, um, 
which one there was there was oh boys to the bottom of the sea there is Mr. Spock. yes there's all the, it's 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 really endless look at this though like this, mm -hmm. this is like stuff that was like when i was a kid like they just Oh, Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone's building something, we're happy to give you a very good deal on it. Right. Okay. Mike, here's the question. Yes. Is it called an at at or an at at? Um, what do you think? I think I've heard different. Uh, I think at at. You do? What do you think? I have no idea. I don't really. <laughs> e I don't really either. People can debate it at in the at. comments section. A T A T. Why wouldn't you at, call it if at. you were going to say A T A T? A -T why wouldn't why you? Why would they have a period in between? Why wouldn't it you wouldn't say have A T? A period. Yeah. Why wouldn't you say A T dash A T? Well, it stands for a All Terrain Armored Transport, but I would just call it an ADAT. Yeah, oh. probably. Yeah. But that's you're assuming that that's the way the uh, language was spoken. This. Like the vowels and everything. Like a long time ago in a galaxy. Yeah. Far away. <laughs> okay, these are just like nice. regular SUVs. <laughs> nice. Like just just a Grand Cherokee. Uh huh. Next to the Scooby Doo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Uh huh. Next to the Vampire Van. Coca Cola. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So good. Truck. Mm hmm. Come like on everybody. down. Be part of a new community. Build. Yes. Yeah, meet new people. Yeah, be part of a new community. Yeah, be well, part. no, we want we 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 don't want we don't want do we want to create a new community? Not a new community. We, we do, want the existing community. Yeah, that's what I mean. We want we the just, existing community that's what we in want. here. We want we want you to come down and just kind of come in and say hello to us. Yeah, and just have a cup of coffee. Uh huh. A Build a model. Plug on the classes when they start. And you know that oh, June fourteenth. Oh, actually June fifteenth. June fifteenth. It'll June 14th be Tuesday is a through Friday. Yep. How can yeah, people, from uh, 10 to 2. Please come on down, and, and we have a sign-up sheet right uh -huh. here. Okay. So, and then we'll. And your address here is what? Uh, 232 West Commonwealth Avenue in Fullerton. We're across the street from the police, police. station. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Right, well, thank and you. we're not a bail bonds company. No. no. Just no. She didn't. She at first didn't. She wanted us to get rid of that, but then. Well. Now she then. likes him. But yeah, he's a very nice character. Yeah. We're mm -hmm. just gonna. We're going to coexist. Yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you very okay. much, you guys, for... Mm -hmm. I hope you've all had a good time with us today. Yes. Touring, yeah. touring of the world. A little world wacky, of, but fun. Mm-hmm. History and the present collide. Uh, it's like a little time portal. Yeah, yeah, that's why we said that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah it is, isn't it? It's it a is. magical space. It is a magical space. Mm -hmm. It lives and breathes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs>